on Twitter. It's very important to describe persons with disabilities that way. It's really the appropriate terminology. Um, there's one word, handicapped, which should not be used. Many people with disabilities hate that, especially people who use wheelchairs. For example, handicapped parking, handicapped restroom. It's better to use accessible bathroom, accessible parking. So that's much better language to use. The reason why I uh, use the word handicapped, that was from long ago. People would beg for money. People would have cups and beg. But it really gives the impression that people with disabilities are poor or need other people to survive, and that's not true. Another word is suffering from a disability. People who have disabilities do not like this term. Um, we're not suffering with a disability. We're suffering from... We don't have a problem with our disability. We have a problem accessing things in the world. A physical barrier can be removed, but an attitudinal barrier is even more difficult. And it's sad because it's a medical point of view. It's a very pathological point of view. So we need to change our view in society from a medical point of view to a point of view that puts the person first. Another important point is that disability does not discriminate against anybody. Some people are not an elderly person. I might have to experience that. But it could happen to anyone whose family has any deafness or disability at all. But when I was two years old, uh, you would think I'm just an average person. And it's true, a disability for anyone, even wealthy people. Maybe you've seen the movie The King's Speech, and that's about the father of our current Queen Elizabeth in England. And he had a stutter, and that was his disability. And the, queen, the Queen's husband's mother was also born deaf, who was elected four times. He used a wheelchair. And in that time, no one even knew. He was not born that way. He didn't grow up with a disability, but he contracted polio, and that's when he had to use a wheelchair. Helen Keller is another example. She was deaf blind. She got sick with scarlet fever and became deaf and blind. And also, Richard, he has a learning disability called dyslexia, but he is one of the most entrepreneurs. And many of you party group in the world. One billion people. So that's the size of China. With four trillion dollars in the market. So obviously they lose businesses need to do more research out more statistics about this. They find out statistics about gender, age, and other demographic information, but they need to do more research to provide um, accessible services and products. For example, Target. Target was sued about, um, millions of dollars, and that's a lot more providing captioning for their streaming, streaming services. American Airlines travel. So there's a lot more examples. And we have laws here. We have web accessibility. Now, 
Maybe you feel like you really want to make your product and service accessible, but you think, who's responsible for this? Is it the coder's responsibility or the developer's responsibility? Really, it's everyone in the team's responsibility. Uh, coding will have to follow some of the international standards. For example, writers and editors and content uh, people who do content strategy need to follow these guidelines as well. And that will improve the user experience for everyone. Visual designers need to make sure that there's color contrast. And like I just uh, pointed out in my first slide. Also, in terms of user experience, we have these categories. And it's good for people working in UX know about the standards. But that's not enough to just check it off the list now of a page that has potential accessibility issues. Now, many websites have accessibility issues. I can't discuss it all in depth, but I'll show you two examples right now. First, we have CAPTCHA. That's a problem for people who are blind. It's not just people who are blind, but it affects the user experience for us all. I'm not blind, but I often have frustrations with CAPTCHA. The letters are very distorted and difficult to understand on the form. Accessible. Valid. Chats or video chats. Exp uh, someone has a difficult accent to understand, it could help you understand too. Maybe you notice with my voice, it depends on the environment. It could be a noisy environment and the caption can help. I am involved in UX and user experience and often there are... Okay, so now you understand here okay, but no one asks, hey, can are there captions? Does everyone understand? So when you host an event, you need to make sure that there are captions available. And you shouldn't wait till someone requests it. Many people don't want to ask for services. Um, you can ask, uh, you can, I encourage anyone who's having an event to have open captioning. And you can have an announcement and say, we will have a open captioning at the event like you see here. And if you need any additional services, to please let me know. Sometimes people will request an interpreter or wheelchair access. Events need to make sure that they pick a place that is also accessible to people who use wheelchairs. And speaking about employment, that's a big barrier for people with disability too. They will have a d diversity and inclusion objective to include focused on diversity. If I apply for a job, it, I have to decide whether I disclose if I have a disability or not disability. Sometimes there's a person with no disability and low qualifications and a disabled person with high qualifications, but they're rejected. So it's best to hire someone who has the best qualifications. And if that person has a disability, they may have great ideas to contribute and there'll be a real uh, benefit to the company. I've had that frustration myself a lot. During interviews, I have to let them know that I'm deaf and I'm rejected straight off the bat. Or I'm given, uh, I'm invited to an interview by an interpreter. That's Nelson Mandela's uh, memorial school and work. Luckily here at the um, that was something that I experienced, bad interpreters. But I also went to a wedding, and a friend hired interpreters for me. So I got, so when I got it, comfortable providing services and accessibility for only certain things. It should be open for show up. You can't smile in the bookstore and have the books uh, be converted into braille. So a smile when you have a disability and showing a good attitude 
is a really frustrating message. Plus, frustrations that everyone that you might feel in. Last weekend, at the Grammy Awards, Stevie Wonder, who is a blind musician, uh, was given the envelope to announce the winner. And he was laughing. He was like, ha, 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 you guys can't read the winner. It's totally me. About the physical events and educational events. So I want to thank you very much for listening. I provide accessibility in terms of user experience.